un cuello. Ông chấm ra phật cả, mình to cái chấm ra cả để để bị thi sám nạc cả, hay to nhất là về cái chuyện từ thằng kỳ thảo bình nhá, rồi bây mình to cả đạo bằng hai nhảy cả xa, con lừa nó đã bọc luôn. Good morning, Mr. President, good morning, Your Honours. Uh, good morning, Council. Um, good morning, uh, General Public. Uh, Your Honours, uh, this morning, this presentation will focus on uh, the Camp Ong Chang uh, airfield uh, construction site. Um, and as stated, we'll be concentrating on uh, non uh, trial. Can you hear me? Would help if you talked into the mic. You are uh, difficult to understand. Thank you, Your Honours. Um, so I'll try this microphone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah. Testing one, I, two, three. I can three. hear you, Andy. Is it just my? No. Can you hear me now, Your Honours? Uh, Can I've been told it might be my headset, so please try again. I think it's working now. Is that correct, Your Honours? Good morning. Uh, Your Honours, uh, this presentation will concentrate on um, the Kampong Chenang uh, airfield construction site. And the prosecution will be highlighting particular documents um, that is not trial testimony uh, with the aim of uh, supporting and corroborating and proving uh, elements of, of the crimes against humanity that occurred at the, uh, at the airfield that the prosecution alleges occurred during the DK period. Um, the crimes that uh, we would submit that these documents would um, assist in proving uh, that of uh, attacks against human dignity, uh, enslavement, extermination, uh, enforced disappearances, murder and political persecution. Uh, many of the documents have uh, multiple facets in terms of the areas that they would assist in proving, so uh, perhaps uh, this introduction can apply to, to most of uh, the relevance of those documents. Your Honours, I propose to present about 39 documents um, in the time that we have, and with the aim of putting forward some con contemporaneous documents um, from 1975 to 1979, but uh, within that general timeline, interposing uh, some written records of interview given to the Office of the Co-Investigating Just Just Judges to help elaborate um, and corroborate those documents and the, the oral testimony that Your Honours have heard already. The first document, Your Honours, is uh, E3182, and it's dated the 9th of October 1975, and it's a standing committee meeting minutes of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, and at English 0018-3407, Khmer 001-9126, and French 0029-2886. Um, at this meeting, um, it was recorded, this conversation was recorded, 
As for the military airfields, we have plans to build at different sites. We can perhaps examine Kampong Chnang, strengthening and expanding it. If it's too far, we can build in Sector 15. So our goals are different, immediately combined with Pot Chin Tong. Your Honour, where it says um, that the goals are different, if you look at the context of that document, uh, they appear to be referring to the, the goals of the Chinese. Um, the relevance of this document is that um, it assists in showing Nu and Chia and Q Sampan's awareness, not, awareness of, and the, uh, perhaps the first record we have in terms of the establishment or the idea being proposed that there might be an airfield at um, Camp Ponchanang. And I'll move to <coughs> the next um, document, document, Your Honours. Um, and it's E31139, and I'd ask if it could be shown on the screen. And it's dated uh, the 22nd of January 1976. And this document will assist in showing um, that the military command structure at the airfield, uh, Division 502, were in the early days very concerned with uh, political stances uh, and class of the cadre in the Division 502. Um, Your Honours, if I can ask that the document be shown on the screen, um, it's in Khmer, so people can ໃບອີ່ສາທິດຈຸນອາດເປັນເມືອງຊິອາກະສາພິສາຄໄມນະອັນຈະບໍ່ໄດ້ອະນຸຍາດໃຫ້ບຸກລຶກໃນຕົວ
number two military airfields, we will set up operations in Camp Chenang. We must to defend the country effectively. Whatever they want, we will do that. I believe they're referring to the Chinese when you look at the context of that. Some things we will buy in additional quantities. So, Your Honours, as of April 1976, it appears that there's been a decision that the airport be established. The next document, Your Honour, is Your Honours, uh, is an E3 slash 222. It's dated 15th of May 1976. And um, it's a standing committee meeting minutes again. Uh, in these particular minutes, both Nu and Jia and Q Sampan are both recorded as being present. And it records, it appears to record the actual commencement of the construction, um, or the immediate construction of the, of the airfield. And if I refer to English 0018 to 0771 in French, 0032, 23, 0032, sorry, 3, 0032, 3892, it states um, the airfield, uh, Com Comrade Q reported, uh, obviously referring to Sun Sen, at Pongro, they have had to place much gravel, uh, they asked us what the buildings are roofed with, uh, whatever to roof with so that it will not be hot. Uh, the drilling group has arrived. So it appears that um, uh, work had started, was about to start, um, certainly around about uh, May 1976. Your Honours, if I can uh, now refer to uh, document E3-13, and I would ask that this document be placed on the screen, screen when I read the text. And it's dated the, the 9th of October 1976. And it's um, relevant um, to assist in proving the, uh, the commander of Division, of, Division 502, Su Met, um, who was responsible for the airfield construction, um, had the intent to purge soldiers within the RAK um, more generally. And the document's entitled uh, Minutes of the Meeting of Secretaries of Divisions as Independent Regiments. And it's chaired by the meeting is chaired by Sun Sen, and it briefly the minutes briefly record the communications between the general staff and centre divisions about their role in, in internal purges and re-education of enemies uh, amongst other matters. And at this meeting. Um, Salmet was present, um, commander of v Division 502, and at English 0094, 0350, Khmer 0005, 2411, and French 0033, 4980, he's recorded as saying this. After the party revealed the upper traitorous links belonging to American imperialism and the revisionists, I was happy and had more faith in the party. This experience proves that our party has a solid grip on things and a stance of constant vigilance. If there are contradictions, it, the party, grasps them clearly, and this is a a victory for our party. With regards to this problem, it can be said that the enemies have been basically eliminated. But it's imperative to take further measures to prevent this from happening a second, a third, a fourth, and more times. The enemy will not be able to do anything uh, to us so as long as our military is politically hard and clean. It is imperative to strengthen the party politically ideologically and organisationally. It's imperative to dare absolutely to conduct purges. And, Your Honour, that um, is of 
the 9th of October 1976. And the reason why uh, these documents relating to Salmet are being uh, put before your honours today is to show that um, the person responsible with the construction of the airfield was also at the same time um, actively involved in purging of members of the RAK under his responsibility. That's why um, we put forward that it's relevant, particularly in relation to the evidence you've heard of purges um, occurring at the airfield. Your Honour, uh, the next section of the document, um, E3-13, um, uh, is also relevant. It relates to um, Salmet's uh, immediate superior, Sun Sen, who seems to chair the meeting. And at English 0094-03354-55, Khmer 0005-2414, and French 0033-4982-83. Uh, the chair of the meeting, uh, Sun Sen, uh, concludes the meeting with um, uh, some operational uh, paragraphs at the end. And he refers to operational methods after hearing all the other divisional commanders talking about um, the issues in relation to enemies and purges. And he states, uh, one, uh, continuous education is imperative. It is imperative to purge no good elements absolutely in the sense of an absolute class struggle. The purge is premised on three principles. Category one, the dangerous category, they must be absolutely purged. Category two, the ordinary liberal category, they must be educated again and again in our education schools. And category three, the category of those who have merely been incited by the enemy, merely believing in the enemy incitement, as a first step, they should undergo refashioning to get them to no longer believe the enemy. Um, the, the purpose of this, of course, is to show the, the absolute preoccupation of the, uh, of the army of Kampuchea in um, purging the enemy and categorizing people at, at three different levels as to what would happen to them uh, once discovered. Your Honours, uh, the next document I'd like to refer to is a written record of interview and it's E3-5279. Um, and it's relevant into, in, in relation to uh, proving the whole, uh, the list of crimes that have been uh, alleged in the indictment at, Ka at Kham Ponchanang um, airfield. This witness, who was a 20-year-old male in 1975, and was merged into um, Division 502, he was sent to the airfield from late 1976 to early 1977 until at least 1978. And this is what he told the investigators um, as a member of Division 502, what his experience was. Um, at the airfield at English 0029-3008-10, Khmer 0028-7548-51, French 0034-2677-79. He was asked, when you were first sent to Kampong Chenang Airport construction site, when were you first sent? They sent me to the Kampong Chenang Airport construction site in late 1976 or 1977, but I do not remember the month. I was sent there because I was a former soldier of District 20 in 1972. Later, on between 1972 and 1973, I was transferred. When you were transferred from Division 11 of the Special Zone to Division 502, when were you? Answer, after Phnom Penh fell on the 17th of April 1975, 
My group was included in Division 502 under Met. As the commander and Levi and Fal as his deputies. I do not know where these people are now. Division 502 was very large. It controlled the Air Force troops of Pochintong and Air Defence troops. What did you see when you first arrived at the Camp Chenang Airport construction site? At that time, the place was a paddy. There was only palm trees and other trees. The first activity I saw, there was people digging up the stumps of palm trees and trees and cleaning the earth. Each unit followed, up, followed its plan led by hundreds of Chinese experts. As far as I knew, most people were from Preveng and Sveirang provinces, and hundreds of trucks transported people to that place. In 1978, more and more people were sent to the construction site, and there were also more and more killings. The people from Preveng and Sveirang were the East Zone people. Why did you know they were from there? That was the question. He answered, the people from Preveng and Sveirang provinces were separated to live with me, and they personally told me that they were from the East Zone. All of them were soldiers who did not know why they were sent to Camp Chenang. They just knew their leaders were accused of being traitors. They worked and stayed with me, they told me the people who came here were just combatants, but they did not know where they sent their leaders, whose positions were platoon level and above. Question, what did they tell you with regard to the sending of their group to the airport construction? He said that they were summoned to a attend a meeting and were disarmed. Then they had themselves prepared to build at the Camp Chenang airport construction site. Please, ex then the interview goes on and there's clarifications are asked for and the questioner asked, please explain clearly based on what you know in relation to more and more killings. And he stated, I would like to explain two points. First, when I went to cut small trees to make the halls at the airport, I saw many dead body pits of the people who were just killed at PM Lock Mountain, approximately five kilometers from the airport, and dog scratchings traces were still there. I presume that they were definitely that they definitely took people from the airport construction site to be killed there because a number of people in my unit disappeared. Second, I knew that the killings were done every day. They tricked them and they took them to help the people harvest rice. I knew this because the guards of the trucks transporting the people there told me that they were transported, that they transported the people to be killed. They told me to escape if I could. The trucks transporting the people drove to the direction of the Ramayas railway. Question, could you tell, sorry, question, it was very hard work. How was your situation at the Camp Chenang Airport construction site? There were people dying of disease every day. Some people died of starvation and overwork. I saw them carry the dead bodies to bury in the forest near the airport construction site. The patients were also taken to the hospital near the airport construction site. This um, witness gave another interview, and the other interview is E3-5263, and he further talks about being taken from the airfield and placed in S22, and I refer to English ERN 0028-224-225, Khmer ERN 0027-0178 to 80, and, and French ERN 0028-3349 to 51. Yes, Mr. President.
ผมได้ยังเล่าเว้นกิโลเมตรกับพรเถลอมชีวิตสักขมายกอดเจนมอสซอมาไปปีเป็นยังมันดังเลยตีหน้าไปยังเธอสามราคาเมื่อได้มันตอนใดบานชูบยูอันไอ้ไอ้ว่าในความจริงแล้วผมพูดถึง S22 ที่ไม่ได้มีการพูดคุยมากในที่นี้แต่ในที่นี้ผมได้ยินว่าเป็นศูนย์ควบคุมการควบคุมของสถานีสังคมที่เกี่ยวกับ S22 และนี่ผู้พิสูจน์อธิบายมากขึ้นเกี่ยวกับ S22 และถ้าผมได้ฟังคำพูดของเขาในที่นี้ผมจะอธิบายว่าในที่นี้ผมได้ฟังคำพูดของเขาในที่นี้ผมจะอธิบายว่าในที่นี้ผมได้ฟังคำพูดของเขาในที่นี้ผมจะอธิบายว่าในที่นี้ผมได้ฟังคำพูดของเขาในที่นี้ผมจะอธิบายว่าในที่นี้ School. I can't remember the name. The name. The leadership of S22. Hundreds of people were detained at S22. All soldiers of Division 502, who had just been brought in from their former units in the Special Zone. After I had been at S22 for three to four months, I went to work only once a week and ate only banana stalks, bananas and morning glory mixed with a few grains of rice. The guards at S22 had food rations. In late 1977, I was extracted again to work at the Camp Hong Chenang airfield. So this is the second time that this person worked at the airfield. He states that tens of thousands of troops working there had been disarmed, and those from the east came in sheets, in brackets, in droves. I saw that hundreds of people had died there since I saw pits and blood-stained bodies when I was sent into the forest to saw firewood. I knew that those who died had fallen ill as a result of the almost non-stop work or they had stolen food to eat, food which was all the harvest of what they themselves had grown. Your Honour, I would now like to move to the next document, uh, E3-84, and uh, if possible I'd ask that it be um, placed on the screen. It's dated the 15th of December 1976, and again it's another uh, meet, uh, it's another minutes of meetings of the RAK of which the divisional commanders and general staff met and discussed various issues, particularly their role in the internal purges and the re-education of enemies. And I'd like to refer to um, a passage where the Chief of Staff uh, Sun Sen includes by remarking at English 0023-3718, Khmer 0000-8478, and French 0038-6208. And he states, on the enemy, external enemies in general, there has not been any problem. But as for the internal enemies, they have basically been scattered. But at the same time, there have been some occurrences showing that enemies are still active embedding inside our army. He goes on to state, our measures, we must closely grasp the problems of screening and purifying our army. There have been a few occurrences which we must pay attention to and monitor. In fact, the reasons are related. Do not have the view that this is normal. The way to find them, we must monitor and meet and examine each occurrence. The external, external enemy is not anything to worry about, but we must pay attention to the remaining internal enemies. If we are lax and are in a state of pacifism, they will seize the opportunity to attack our revolution. Uh, the importance of that, Your Honours, um, is clear in, in the sense that um, we would say the general policies uh, in relation to purging of enemies of the Khmer Rouge are being implemented in a pragmatic fashion within the RAK and in that particular meeting uh, Sumet was present and uh, that was the um, perhaps 
you could say, the standing order uh, from Sun Sen. Your Honours, if we can move to um, E3 slash 362, um, and this this document relates to, um, or it's relevant in the sense that it assists in showing uh, why East Zone um, cadre was sent um, to the Kampong Chenang Airport, and it, it assists in showing the, the persecu persecutionary element of their presence um, at the airport. The witness um, is in fact um, a 23-year-old male who was in 1975 and he was a battalion commander from the southwest zone from 1975 to 1977. Uh, he was appointed as a regiment commander in the centre division 703. At English 0026, 8895 at Khmer 0021-0209 and French 0026-8903. He states, he puts the, first of all, he puts the East Zone purge in the context of other purges and explains where the East Zone people went. He states, before the integration of the army of the southwestern zone to fight against the cadres of the eastern zone, it was true that there was a scheme and preparation to purge those internal cadres. There was a planning meeting of the standing committee which comprised Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia and Yang Sari. The purge was caused by lack of internal trust and an accusation of a moral offence. As a result, some were arrested and sent to S-21, and some were sent to build the airbase in Camp on Chenang. And you know, this is before the Eastern Zone purge. He goes on, in 1975 to 1976, Sam Bit ordered the arrest of those in the army who had connections with Vietnam. In 1975, a number of the commanders of the battalion and that of the regiment were arrested and charged with being spies of Vietnam. So the army was purified from the beginning. The reason why those in the army were arrested was because they were accused of helping Vietnam. They were arrested from the strings of traitors. The arrests were made on the order of the zone, which I think was from someone who was above Sam Bit. Some of the arrested were sent to Phnom Penh and some were take, taken to Kampot's security office. Then the interview goes on and he starts to talk about, this witness starts to talk about the Eastern Zone purge of which he was a part of. Um, Your Honours, he was a witness in the, in the prior case, in case 2-1. At an English ERN 0026-8896-97, and Khmer 0021-0211-12, and at French 0026-8904-05, the same witness stated uh, in response to this question. Please tell us from your knowledge about a story concerning a purge in the Eastern Zone. Before a cadre purge mission in the Eastern Zone, the military commanders and I were called in mid-1977 to attend a meeting in Tai Mok's home in Takeo. We were told that we would be sent to cleanse those in the Eastern Zone who had collaborated with the Vietnamese. The purpose of this mission was twofold, fight the Vietnamese in Cambodia and sweep up the Vietnamese collaborators. Attending the meetings were uh, Sway, commander of the Southwestern Zone, Ren, division commander, Tai Pus, commander of Division 210, Yang Pan, commander from Takeo, and Sok Chin, commander from Camp Hot. The meeting was urgent and was held for one day. There were 700 soldiers from Camp Hot, 1,000 from Takeo, 
and 700 to 800 from Kandal. A day after the meeting, we were sent to Phnom Penh. We stayed overnight in Bong Trebek, where Division 703 headquarters were located. A day later, Sun Sen told us again in a meeting about the purpose of this mission and ordered all commanders to prepare a comprehensive plan. A day later, we went to Svei Reng, but we stayed in Niak Long for a couple of weeks. There were many meetings at the division level to prepare this scheme. Ren, Tarmak's son-in-law, sent a telegram to me asking me to return to Phnom Penh to attend a special meeting with the top leaders who would discuss the purge of the eastern cadres. There are about 600 to 700 participants, um, including Mia Smut, Sok Chin, Ying Pan, D, Tai, with the presence of Pol Pot, Ta Mok, Nguyen Chia, and Sun Sen. In the meeting, Nguyen Chia said, we must purge the internal enemy and fight the Vietnamese invaders. The purge intensified in 1978, as told by Revolutionary Flag No. 7. This magazine also talked about building a core force from local farmers by excluding the intellectuals. In, a, in another witness, uh, another interview from this witness, he particularizes more about how the East Zone cadre or East Zone soldiers were sent to Camp, Camp on Chenang Airport. And I refer to E3-361 at English ERN 0076-6453, Khmer ERN 0019-4467-68, and French ERN 0026-8884-85. The question was, what did you do to the East Zone cadres? He answered, the centre sent me and others to the East Zone to arrest all cadres in all nine brigades and send them to the airfield construction project. The commanders were sent to Phnom Penh and the subordinate soldiers were sent to construct the airfield in Kampong Chanang province. I don't know how many East Zone commanders were sent to Phnom Penh or to S-21. Almost all of the subordinate soldiers were transported by military trucks with military teams as escorts to the airfield construction site in Kampong Chanang. The division sent to the East Zone to purge the cadres there included Division 221 under the command of Yang Pan, Division 703 under Dai, D-Y, Division 340 under T, T-H-Y, and Division 460, a naval force from Kampong Song. I don't remember the name of that division commander. It may have been Som Savi. More than 10,000 soldiers were sent to make the arrest. Further on in the interview, at English 0076-6457, Khmer 0019-4471-72, and French 0026 8889-90, he was asked this question, who made the decision to use the East Zone cadres to build the airfield at Camp on Chanang and to Phnom Penh? He said, orders came from Sun Sen, and Sun Sen received orders from the centre. The transport was done by removing them and taking them to the division location of Ren, at the airfield no west of Svayrang, and they were transported in Phnom Penh by GMC trucks and Chinese and Azim trucks. About 5,000 people were taken. What question was put, what did Nguyen Chia say in detail relating to the cleansing inside the party ranks? And he states, Nguyen Chia spoke about purging embedded enemies and boring holes inside, enemies that were the arms and legs of the Yuan. Nguyen Chia ordered the arrest, meaning the purge. 
In that era, the term purge meant to arrest and kill. I regret this very much. They accused the leaders of being traitors and the subordinate soldiers were also arrested. This is the truth. So, Your Honours, that, that, those two interviews uh, are from um, a witness who was heavily involved in the purge of the East Zone. And so we would submit that the, the facts put forward um, have a, a high level of probative value. Your Honours, um, I'd now like to move to another document, E3-807. And if this can be placed on the, on the screen as well, please. It's dated the 1st of March, 1977, and it relates to um, another RAK divisional and general staff meeting uh, with Sun Sen and Su Met and other division leaders. Uh, at that meeting, they discuss um, their role in internal purges and re-education and, and other matters. At this meeting, um, at English 0093-3834 and Khmer 0005-2304-05 and French 0032-3922, um, Sumet, um, Division 502 Commander responsible for the airport was uh, reported as saying. Internally, there was the problem of a grenade being tied up to kill a comrade. It was said that there was a contradiction because the chairman of the platoon had made a severe criticism. It is obvious that a number of elements that we had previously arrested really are enemy elements. More than 50 no-goods have been sent to S-21. There can only be reliability if five more company secretaries are removed. The relevance of this, uh, of course, Your Honours, this is the behaviour of the person very responsible for the running of the um, Camp on Chang airfield. We don't know whether those 50 no goods, in fact, have come from the airfield or some other place. It certainly indicates um, his attitude role uh, in purges uh, most, more generally. And if I can further refer to E3-1140, dated the 1st of April 1977, and this is a, a report from uh, Sao Met, the commander of Division 502, to Doik at S21. This is April 1977. I don't think we need the ERA numbers because a lot of these documents are single pages. And he states, to comrade brother Doik for information, after obtaining the confession of Song of M62, we have transferred the following to S21. Phnom, whose wife named Pal, the network of some, was sent on the 30th of March 1977. C, whose wife named Hong, is a traitor and has already been arrested. Also, he is Som's network of M62. Three, Muk, a member of Battalion 512 based on the confession uh, of Sorong and Som, was sent during the night of the 30th, 31st of March 1977, and four, Pal, a member of Battalion 514, based on the confession of Sorong and Som, was sent in the morning of the 1st of April 77. I wish to request Anka's advice on the remainder in order to take further action. And that's signed by, uh, for the military committee of Division 502, Met Tudor. Your Honours, if we can just move 
say perhaps six days forward to the, the 7th of April 1977 and if we can look at the document um, E3 slash um, 849 and if I can ask that it be placed on the screen. Your Honour, this is a document that has been briefly discussed in court. Um, it's a, an RAK report um, listing um, the numbers of people in the different divisions and the total number of the, um, of the RAK armed forces. And that, that total number, it's very hard to see on the screen, but um, it's a grand total of uh, 61,189. Uh, the interesting thing about this document, of course, is that when we look at item 2 and 3, uh, Division 310 and Division 450, a significant percentage of those divisions um, appear to have been sent to Camp on Chnung, um, which we believe is the airfield based on the evidence. 1,127 from 310 and 1,526 um, from 450. Um, what's, what's interesting, I think, about the document, Your Honours, is that that number adds up to over, over 2,600 people at the airfield. That doesn't account for um, the people from 502, which were obviously at there. It doesn't account for Division 170, um, which, as you may have heard and as um, the documents will show, were also at the airfield. And it doesn't account for um, people from other divisions that were sent to the airfield as well. So when we're starting to um, establish uh, the numbers, I think these are a very good um, base um, base level figures, absolute minimum figures of which the number would be far higher because of the obvious omissions in this document of other divisions at uh, the airfield. Your Honours, if, if we now can turn to um, document E3-970, and this is um, dated the 30th of May 1977, um, and again it's a report from Salmet, Commander of Division 502, to Doik at S21. And if I just read out the report briefly, to beloved comrade, brother Doik, uh, be advised. On the night of the 29th of May 1977, I sent 27 traitors from the traitorous strings of Division 310 and 450. A traitorous string of it's illegible, but then the number 25, and a string of some and Mao. Last evening we sent only 25 persons. I will send two others in the afternoon and evening as reported in the table. At seven or eight tonight, I will send four more, a traitorous string of the old 25 and Hien, who was sent to you on the 25th of March 1977. At 10 or 11 tonight, seven more of the traitorous string of Mao and that of the previous group will be sent. On the previous day, you said you would give the responses of Mao to my side if Ankar did not object. I request this document to continue to search out the enemies. Um, this document says a lot of things, Your Honours, but obviously one thing it does say is that um, Sumet, Division 502 Commander, responsible for the airfield, of which there are obviously um, large numbers of RAK members is actively purging um, members of the RAK. Your Honours, in that document it referred to um, 27 traitors, Division 310 and 450 were sent to S21. I would now like to go to some written records of interview from people um, that were in Division 310 and were forced to work at the airfield. Again, it's not clear whether all any of those 310 and 450 that were sent on this day to S21 were from the airfield. But it is um, interesting to look at the experiences of 310 and 450 at the airfield to see if there's any correlation between their experience and um, overall purges. Your Honour, 
The next document is E3-7877. It's a written record of interview. It's of a 20-year-old male in 1975. He was a Division 310 soldier. He was sent to Camp Ong Chenang Airfield. And at English 0034-6979, Khmer 0034-2437, and at French 0041-1785-86, he states this. They told me, Toy told me that I would have to be sent to be tempered at Camp on Chenang. How many people were sent to Camp Pong Chenang? What did they have you do in Camp Pong Chenang? Answer. I was sent to Camp Pong Chenang alone in approximately 1978. They made me make holes in the rock to put dynamite for the blasting in order to make caves for parking aircraft. And the rocks were grinded for the airfield runways. On average, Five to six people got injured, injured because of the blasting. Sometimes they had me dig dirt at the airfield work site. Were there many people at the airfield work site? There were hundreds of people there. These people were sent there to be tempted, and most of them had either CIA tendency or KGB tendency. The next document, Your Honours, is E3-5276. It's from a 21-year-old male in 1975, a Division 310 soldier. And he was sent there to the airfield from early 1977 until early 1978. And at English, ERN 0028-7356, Khmer 0028. 2954 to 55 and French ERN 0033-9922. He responded to this question. Some witnesses said they had seen people whose arms were being tied and transported out of the construction site to be killed. Please state what you know. I never personally saw these events, but during meetings I heard them say that if they found anyone making mistakes at work, they take them to Praesar prison and kill them. I noticed that the people working with me disappeared. I was told that they withdrew this person to work at this place or that place, etc. I never saw those people who had disappeared returned. The next document, Your Honour, is E3-3959, and this is also from a Division 310 soldier, a 19-year-old male in 1975, and he was sent to the airfield in late 1976 to late 1977. And at English 0027-8685, at Khmer 0027 0168 and at French 0048-6100, he answered in response to this question, when did Ankar have you go build the airfield at Camp it was approximately late 1976 when I was sent by Angkor to build the Camp Ong Chenang airfield. There I worked digging up the stumps of coconut trees and palm trees. It was just my comrades who built that airfield. No other groups were there before us or after us. There were 600 of us and there were two Chinese technicians to supervise I worked there for about five months. How were the workers there? There were no killings there. The deaths were from disease and overwork, that's all. Tarthok and Tarlabay were the superiors there. I don't know whether they are alive or dead now. They were from the southwest and were in Division 502. But further on, um, the the witness um, talks about going to hospital and then coming back to the airfield. And he gives um, a further impression. And this is an English 0027-8686-87, Khmer 0027-8686-87. 
0169 to 70 and French 0048 to 01. And it was asked, what happened to you next? Later, this is after the five month period, I was wounded and sent to the 17th of April hospital. After that, they sent me back to the camp on Chenang airfield. I saw many Khmer Rouge soldiers from the east zone and from other locations living there, especially the handicapped and wounded. And those, soldier, those soldiers had no weapons. Later on, those handicapped and wounded soldiers were taken away and killed at Am Liang after having been told that they were going to fight. I was spared whose company chairman Chan, my chairman during the fighting with the Vietnamese, helped me. At that time, Ta Chan was the person who killed those people. He was from the southwest. Ta Song was also killed at the same time. And Your Honours, if we can move to E3-3962, and this is um, another statement from a Division 310 soldier, a 21-year-old male in 1975. He was at the airfield from early 1978 to January 1979, and he told investigators at ERN 0029-3367-69, that's the English, Khmer 0028-7538-40, and French 0035-5875-78, he answered in response to this question. When you first reached the Camp on Chenang Airport work site, what did you see? What were you asked to do? When I first arrived, I saw all the trees had been felled, and I witnessed tens of thousands of people working. At that time, they had me dig roots of trees and palm trees and had me clean the land. Question. What type of actions were taken on those who had been criticised and on the lazy people who did not work under command? Answer. Those who were lazy were to be educated and if they still failed to follow, they were called to training sessions and there would be permanent disappearance. Disappearance, comma, I heard from an acquaintance means they were taken to be killed. At the Camp on Chenang Airport work site, I witnessed wrongdoers were called to training sessions. They were tied and uploaded onto trucks driven away. Riang and Leng reminded me to try to self-temper because I was noted to be sent to Phnom Penh to Tool Sleng, if not Prey After that meeting, after that, a meeting on the southwest was actually held to criticise me. Further, he states, do you, to this question, do you have any ideas why more people were from the east zone uh, went to work at the Camp on Chenang Airport work site? Answer, at the Camp on Chenang Airport work site, I joined the meeting, meetings with those who were within the unit to be advised and informed that the people in the East Zone betrayed the party and ran into Vietnam. So they were sent to work here to be kept under surveillance. Did you note what types of actions were taken on the people from the East Zone? And the answer was, I noted that once they made an infraction, they would disappear. Infractions included being non-compliant with the set plans, being undisciplined and irresponsible in speaking. Then there would be a call informing about going to training sessions and they have disappeared ever since. Question. How long did you work at the Camp on Chenang Airport work site? Answer, I worked there until Vietnamese fighting into Camp on Chenang in a month in 1979. Having seen troublesome situations, senior people ordered us to have stuff, stuff such as rollers, compactors, trucks, tractors and other stuff for airport construction burned and to run in the direction of Ramayas, direction in Tick. Tick Foss Dis District. Question. 
You've told us that there was cleansing of many people from the east zone who are working at the airport work site. Please clarify this more clearly. This is the last answer of this written record of interview. And he answered, when we escaped from the airport work site, 10 days later, in Tulkapos village, the way to Amliang in Kompong Spau province, they gathered and told the East Zone, who together escaped from Camp Chanang Airport, to arm the Vietnamese or to be armed for the Vietnamese. These people raised their hands and said they were from the East Zone. On the same day, they were taken towards the south of Tulkapos Pagoda, where pits had already been dug. The ones who took those people away were armed. Before they were taken away, I saw a tractor digging a 15 by 15 metre pit, about three metres deep. Five days later, we were removed to another village, about one kilometre from Tulkapos village, where I saw many piles of clothes. And I asked one individual who told me that the owners of these clothes had already been killed within the compound of the pagoda in Tulkapos. Five days later, we were armed to fight with Vietnam. While riding on the truck, passing in the pagoda of Tulkapos village, I smelled the decomposed corpses from near the Tulkapos pagoda. So I assumed that the people who had been escorted there and were all killed and put into the pit that I saw them dig. You want to note the time? ចាប់ពីនេះទៅទៅលោកអមរមួយកាឡាសម្រាក់ចាប់ពីនេះទៅទៅលោកអមរមួយកាឡាសម្រាក់ចាប់ពីនេះទៅទៅលោកអមរម